are entrepreneurs created or are they born to be entrepreneurs? Welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 51. Today is September the 20th, and I'm Dr. Darina Shine, and I welcome you f- to being here on this podcast. Greetings, greetings. Hope everyone is doing wonderful. This is a pre recorded audio version of Chronicles of a Nonprofit because I want to share with you. Are, cre- are entrepreneurs created or are they actually born to be leaders, born to be entrepreneurs, born to be resilient in the things that happen in their lives that makes them who they are or who they will become? So entrepreneurs have this talent that is learned, polished, developed, And then there are some that are just born into it. They come with the creative niche to do more, be more, want more, and to have more. So are they born or are they created? In the Scales to Success LLC project here in Youngstown, Ohio, I like to do an assessment at the very onset of putting together the process to building the brand for an individual. And one of the things as a business consultant I look for are the character traits in an individual's personality. Are they outgoing? Are they resilient? Um, How how do they handle problems? How do they solve things? Just basic everyday living Um, you're late for work, you get up, you got to get gas, you know, you have, you know, X amount of gas in the car. Uh, Do you go to the gas station, get gas um, and be late for work? Or do you check the mileage and see if you have enough, you know, gas to get to work and make sure that you remember to go to the gas station after work? Like, what is your what are your thinking strategies? That is something that one should consider when deciding if you are built to be an entrepreneur in today's world. Now, everyone has problem solving opportunities, but they handle them differently. I had a client who, you know, we were in a contract and I was to manage a house and this house took almost four months to get the the person to leave. Four months. And there was a lot of business that could have been developed in that time. But because a person does not have the wherewithal or the understanding, but they may have the finances, they may have the opportunity, but if they don't have a drive and a will to know how to even handle something that extreme, such as a move, it can create chaos. So I learned through one of my partners to be very patient with individuals because we still got the property, we got the location, but it took longer than we expected. You know, we lost a lot of residual income But it was worth it because in the end, the individual who was moving out got that opportunity to breathe and be sure that the steps that were being taken was going to be feasible for both him and our business. So that was an experience that I learned to incorporate in the quality and character of my morality in entrepreneurship and business development. And that's something I want to share today. So so let's go over some things that needs to be considered when thinking about being an entrepreneur. What does your thinking look like, your vision for the future? I mean, is it cloudy? Is it clear? Is it transparent? Is it reality? Is it something that you're already working on? 
Because as an entrepreneur, we must be capable of looking into the future, seeing what is going to go down, you know, and being a visionary means that you influence your own life. You influence your ability to establish goals that you can reach that are maintainable, you know, and not just something that is a fad, something that's oh, I can do that, or, oh, I work here and I'm going to try to now become an entrepreneur and run this. No. I had another client talk to me about relationship issues. And one thing that he recognizes in his wife is that she is controlling and she loves to take over, yet she is not a finisher. She doesn't finish the job. She gets it started. She has the motivation to create. She has the ability to uh, even maintain to a degree, but she does not have what it takes in order to follow completely through, to see a job fulfill itself in its mission. You know, I recently am getting ready for my fifth annual success seminar And I set a goal for myself financially, and this is what I plan to do. But I recognized based on the opportunities that I do have, it's not feasible for the moment. I remember when I was younger, I would go to the car lot to get me a vehicle. And I I remember the salesman saying, you are a person who is on a beer budget, but you want a champagne taste. You have champagne taste on a beer budget. So I wanted a lot more than what I was capable of being able to afford. And that was one of my weaknesses in business. So if I want it, I feel that I deserve it. I'm going to go get it. And But we must be mindful of that. And that's what I had to do. I had to sit back and analyze What I want for my seminar, is it what I need for my seminar? So that's in the works. And I I can't believe that I'm taking the time through patience because, because I am patient, things work out exactly as they should go. The universe is letting me know this as an entrepreneur. Take your time. Think it through. It's not about how good the seminar is going to look because you got the most popular coach on Facebook or on Instagram to come to your venue because many people will sit back and turn their head and shade it like they didn't even recognize that this person was coming. So I can't do it for the public. I must do it for me. And then the remnant of what I do for me will shine through in the way that individuals perceive what I give. And that's how I'm recognizing it. So being a visionary is very important. Seeing the future in your situation is extremely important. And following through is extreme. Number two, being in a position where you understand that things may happen and you want to be successful as an entrepreneur. So you must be resilient. You must be flexible. You must say, I can't have this, so I'm going to use other options. So you have to be creative in manifesting options for yourself in business. So if I can't have this individual come to the seminar because of the goal is unreasonable financially in the time that I have to maintain it. How about I do A, B, or C, and then create the goal sets for A, B, and C. So that's what I'm in the process of doing. It's fun. It's achievable. And I'm learning the person that I was going to jump all in to see about getting this individual to come to the venue. 
without the funds available at this moment. But I haven't went out and even asked for donations. I haven't went out and even asked for sponsorships. But it's just the realistic portion of the process that I need to process, more or less. So being that individual that knows that I have to be flexible, I have to be reasonable, I have to sit at the drawing board and try it for myself, and then set up the goal plan is important. And then recognizing that, (laughs) be mindful, don't be so excited, because what's going to happen is if I was so excited that I got my keynote speaker to come and I'm just, you know, going to do whatever it takes to get them here. And then they show up and I don't have the funds to finish the contract, the agreement. Now I've wasted money. They're not going to show because they didn't get paid. And I'm stuck looking unprofessional in my venue. So I'm going to choose to really, really think ahead of the game instead of being emotionally driven. I'm going to think realistically. Yeah, we're going to take risks, but those risks have to outweigh the ability to know that it can be done. You know, those those risks will make illogical sense. It will make no sense to risk something that I know is not going to be capable of being done. You know, so I want you to think about that as an entrepreneur. When you are looking at the outcome, what are you balancing that outcome with? Are the benefits outweighing what is a decision that needs to be made within with, with the possibility of uncertainty? You may not be un you you may be uncertain. So we have to look at that. That risk is it worth it? And then leadership all together. How are you maintaining your entrepreneur practice, the critical skills, the things that entrepreneurs need to understand to inspire themselves, to encourage others, to let them know that, yes, if I can't do this, I still encourage you. I still embrace the fact that we can maybe look at other options. And those other options are what really and truly makes the journey beautiful. It really does. And communicating, keeping it real, being realistic, being transparent, speaking your truth from the beginning so others will understand that you're not playing a game. You're not manipulating the situation and you're not walking through with a sense of entitlement because you choose to believe that because you want it, you can have it. You have to work for it. And then managing your finances. The first thing I did was divide the amount of of cost for the contract into the amount of time that was left to raise this funds. To raise the funds for the seminar and then to add together air lodging, compensation, and then divide that by the time that I'm expecting this individual to use at the venue. And then equate it to reality. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? And at that time, I realized that I needed to be more realistic to the business process and to start things at a principal balance that will budget what I'm looking for. Because again, I started with a specific budget that I knew that I didn't want to over overstand. So these are variables that makes an entrepreneur who they are. Now, I don't know if I was born with it, (laughs) if I came to the planet 
with it or if I watched through experience and I mimicked and I became a product of my environment. It could be done either way. And the beautiful thing about being a product of your environment is you have a choice to take on the scenario of I would rather try something that I know is going to devastate my life because everyone else is doing it, or I would rather use the process of seeing what examples others do with their lives. And if it's not worth it, just don't do it. You know, I was talking with an old friend and, you know, her and I have had a relationship for over 30 years. And one thing that my friend told me is that Why would someone jeopardize the livelihood of life knowing what drugs and alcohol do to the body, to the mind, to the spirit? Knowing that it does this, why wouldn't they take the example to at least try exercise, walking, swimming, uh, painting, uh, learning a craft, an art? being eccentric in another way? Why would they take the opportunity to just be weak and just do the thing that everyone else is doing? And that is an entrepreneurial leadership mindset as well. And she's been in business all of her life. She has helped many people, including myself, to continue to be successful in education. She's an artist. She's an educator. She is a realtor. She is a home owner of several properties. And she has always been a mentor to me. And as I look to my friend, Mrs. Rich, I say to myself that I love the personality. I've seen her grow from being aggressive to patient, to understanding, to motivating, and now truly being a mentor, not someone that I had to compete with, not someone that wanted to cap me off at a glass ceiling and prevent me from rising above more than what I wanted for myself. She, you know, some people love to keep you under that umbrella because they know that you qualify to do what you do. And there's not too many good, you know, successful people in this world that can really and truly go beyond what others expect of them because they didn't even know that they were as successful as they were. So they stay stuck. But this mentor of mine has always given the advice, sound, clear, you know, optionable options. And that's the leader I am today because I mimicked a lot of my environment. My mother was the same way, but she just showed me through experience, this is where I want to be. My grandmother was an entrepreneur, you know, and, and so I don't know if I was born with it or if I was born into it, but either way, Ambition, motivation, transparency, clarity, expectation of success, and consistency are all the keys needed to be an entrepreneur that pushes through and becomes resilient in time. And it's not about how much money you make as you you go through the journey. It's the steps that you take, the decisions that you make that takes the journey through the pathway that is going to lead you to the money. You understand shining entrepreneurs. So I thank you for being mindful and letting go of those relationships, even if it is those children that refuse to allow you to be that parent to them. 
refuse to allow you to punish them. Don't give up. Continue to be as consistent as you are as a parent, as well as an entrepreneur, because some of us have to wear two hats. One hat as an entrepreneur, the other hat as a parent. Some have to wear three, four, and five. Entrepreneur, parent, wife, husband, significant other, educator, and an employee. We cannot give up. And every day, even if we don't pursue a goal, make sure that we tell ourselves tomorrow is going to be a better day. Even if that tomorrow takes a week, a month, a year, because eventually you're going to trip your mind into believing that it's true. It's just like alcoholism. As you grow older, the more alcohol you drink, the more the onset of Alzheimer's has been studied to show that it will onset that. So I thank you so much for being here on this pre recorded audio of Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 51. I thank you for giving your likes, comments, your shares. You know, please comment because you never know what information you can share on this podcast that others may take to even ignite the leader within them, ignite the parent within them. Ignite the fact that, yes, it's time for me as a young adult to consider the choices now so I won't have to make the mistakes in the future. As always, be consistent, be on time, be motivated, and share your love to the world. And as always, we'll see you next time.